Hey Chapel Hill kids, I bet you're wondering why I look like I'm heading to the pool today. Well, guess what? I am. Ah, so refreshing. Hmm. Some might even say peaceful. That's what we're talking about this month, peace. But remember, peace isn't just about resting and relaxing. Peace is proving you care more about each other than about winning an argument. It can be tough to always live at peace with other people, but when we remember how God made peace with us by sending Jesus to be our savior, that makes us want to make peace with others. When you're a peacemaker, it's a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated. Today, we'll find out about someone who had to decide if he could make peace with some people who weren't super nice to him. But first, let's stand up and worship God together. I'm closer to you, but I feel like I'm so far away. Cause I love my fear, let my fear get in front of my face. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 26. God had chosen Abraham to follow him, and God made the same promises to Abraham's son, Isaac. I will make your children after you, as many as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. All nations on earth will be blessed 
because of your children. Thank you, God. The land of the Philistines where Isaac lived had experienced a period of famine, but God blessed Isaac's crops. Hey, boss, we done gathered 100 times more wheat than we planted. Excellent. 103.7 times as much, to be precise. And your flocks and herds are multiplying like rabbits. Actually, they're increasing like sheep and goats, because that's what they are. Very well, carry on. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby grew jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells, cutting off his water source. Excuse me? The king of the Philistines called for Isaac and issued a command. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. It wasn't fair. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight, but he chose to keep his coup. All right. We'll move down to the Valley of Gerar. Isaac and his family packed up everything he owned. I knew I should have been saving all those Camel X delivery boxes. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived many years before. Oh, all right, men. Let's open up those old wells my father dug. <sighs> Isaac's servants immediately got to work, digging for water. Wee! It's hotter than a snake in a hog's back out here. My calculations of soil composition. We should hit water in precisely 2.6 seconds. Well, ain't that the beast needs? Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. <laughs> uh, that is, until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up. So kind of you to open up these wells for us. Step aside, the water's ours. Isaac's servants gaped at the Philistines. You got some knife. These wells belong to Isaac by ancestral tradition and dint of hard labor. Whatever. We're taking the well. Oh yeah? We're gonna have to fight me for it. I believe the appropriate course of action is to flee. As Isaac's servants and the Philistine herdsmen faced off, Isaac himself arrived. Easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. But, uh, but uh, we can take them. Let's go. So Isaac and his family and his servants and his flocks all moved camp down the valley. And once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. This is an exercise in futility. Yeah, well, I've been working out. My futility is really strong. <laughs> Look here. The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water, but it wasn't long before Philistine herdsmen arrived on the scene. Yes, another day, another well for us. Why, you, you, I'll flatten you back to the flood. Step aside. Eek, save me. Once again, Isaac showed up. Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. Oh, come on, we could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. For a third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and once again, his servants dug new wells. This time, I'm gonna tie those bullies in knots and dip them in garlic. Oh, look, water, yay. Wait for it, wait for it. Hmm. This time, no one challenged Isaac or his servants. They were left to tend to their flocks and herds in peace. That is until one day, Isaac spotted King Abimelech heading his way with a host of advisors. When the royal entourage arrived, Isaac welcomed them. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. Abimelech shifted and exchanged a glance with his advisors. Well, we saw clearly the Lord was with you. So we want to make a peace treaty with you. We always treated you well. We sent you away peacefully, and uh, now the Lord has blessed you. <laughs> Give us your word you won't harm us. I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. Early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then the Philistines went on their way. Need a drink? Pretty good well right there by the road. Yep, even though Isaac had the power to win a fight, he had chosen to stay strong and walk away three times in a row. And God had blessed him with peace.
I think we can learn a lot from Isaac in the way he handled that situation. You know, I sure it was not easy to argue over the wills that rightfully belonged to his family, but Isaac chose to make peace. And not only that, think about Jesus. Jesus chose to make peace with us. He allowed himself to be arrested and put to death on the cross, even though he could have stopped it. He did it to make peace with us once and for all. And when we follow Jesus, that will make us want to live in peace also, no matter what, because you can show you care more about others by walking away from a fight. And of course, there are times that you will need to stand up for what's right. There'll be times when the wise thing to do is to not walk away, but to stand up and make it right. If you're in a tough situation and you're not sure what to do to make peace, talk to an adult about it and ask God about it too. It's so important because it'll show people you care about them and that God cares about them too. Our memory verse this month is a great reminder of how we should live. It's Romans 14, 19. Read it with me. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Let us do the work to live in peace this week. Talk about it with your friends and family today and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.